Let's talk about NHS reform. Amazingly, Keir Starmer, the Labour leader, says we need to reform the NHS. I'd love to know what reform you think the NHS should have. You can get in touch, tweet me at Talk TV, text the word talk, then your message to 8722. But this is what Keir Starmer said on Sky News yesterday about what he wants from the NHS. You will always have, whether it's the NHS or any other public service, people say, well, don't do it, it's always been done this way. They're nearly always wrong. Of course there will be you know, challenges whenever you reform something, but frankly, if you don't reform the NHS, then I fear it will die. Reform or die. Very strong words from the Labour leader. Well, let's talk to Dr Bob Gill. He's an NHS GP. He's also producer of the documentary The Great NHS Heist. Good morning to you, Bob. Good morning. Um, do you agree uh, with the Labour leader that the NHS needs to reform or die? Well, what he's missed out is we've had 40 years of reform that has brought the NHS to its knees. Um, what people might be starting to notice that Keir Starmer sounds very much like the Tory party, and that's entirely true. We have two major parties that are following neoliberal ideology, which means privatisation, low taxation and allowing foreign corporations to suck money out of public services. Can I just say, I don't know where you've been living in the last few years, low taxation. Are you kidding me? Um, I, I mean, I have to say, I mean, I don't think many people who voted for this Conservative government think they've got anything like a neoliberal ideology. I think they'd be delighted to get a bit of that. Um, you say 40 years of reform, and there's no doubt, like, um, I was a political journalist for quite a lot of those 40 years, and there's always another reform of the NHS, a lot of it actually under Blair and Brown for those years. Um, it, most reforms of the NHS seem to involve getting rid of one layer of bureaucracy, sacking all, well, putting, getting, giving those people six-figure payouts, and then hiring them again the next Wednesday in another layer of bureaucracy, but called something else. And there always seems to be another job for another NHS manager. Very little reform ever seems to involve making sure that patients get seen quicker and get better care. That's the kind of reform most of us will be looking for. Well, I agree with you. You know, the, the market reforms have massively increased the management and admin cost of the NHS. So that is money being sucked away from patient care. We've also had new labor back in the 2000s saddled the NHS with private finance oh. initiative, which is a huge burden sucking money out of the NHS. That, that is still the... costing billions and billions. And this is, this is for those who don't know, this is NHS hospitals. They basically, they had new hospitals built that they effectively rent rather than own. And they're still yeah. paying these just, I mean, sky-watering sums of money where they've paid for the hospitals sort of five times over. But it kept the cost of building all those new hospitals off the books during Tony Blair and, T and Gordon Brown's time. Absolutely a financial scam. And each, each time there are these reforms, you find more of NHS service provision goes into the private sector. So what effectively they're turning the NHS into is a logo and a funding stream. This has got nothing to do with efficiency. It's got okay. everything to do with driving up costs, either via through taxation or via top up private insurance. So our politicians are no longer serving the public. They're serving the banks, the financiers, the insurance companies. That is the direction of okay, travel. You, you, you say the word, I mean, you're resisting the urge to sort of spit when you say the word private, but saying it with quite a lot of contempt and disdain. An awful lot of the countries neighboring countries in Europe and many other uh, you know the Anglosphere countries not America which is which healthcare system is an absolute disaster unless you're very rich when it's fabulous uh, but therefore I would can say is a, is a very poor health system because people's outcomes shouldn't depend on how much money you've got um, but most of those countries some of them do spend more money some don't on their healthcare systems per, per uh, head of the population but they generally have better outcomes than us. Even some of the much poorer countries, in Eastern Europe even, you can see a doctor very quickly, you can get an, air, an, a, 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 an operation very quickly, um, and they, are not, they haven't got those layers of bureaucracy, but often they are effectively um, private you know, social insurance systems where people are paying privately. Most people, even though I'm worshipping at the altar of the NHS as our national religion, um, don't really care who provides their health care they just want to get the health care for them and their loved ones. Well, if you look at these different systems and you look at the overhead, the cheapest way to, to run a service, if you want to provide universal health care, you do not create a parallel bureaucracy to run an insurance-based system. So that is economic lunacy to create two parallel bureaucracies. Why does it have to be parallel? Why not replace it? 
I mean, I don't care how efficient a system is. I care whether people get good health care or not. And then, I mean, that should be the, that should be secondary. I mean, we need to get, you know, good health care. Sure, but, well, but if other countries are able to do it for the same price and people aren't routinely waiting two years for an operation or two weeks to see a GP, they're doing something better than us, aren't they? Well, if you look at the expenditure of into health care, th th there comes a tipping point whereby you're spending more on health care because you've got profit as an incentive, then you start to get providers doing things that are unnecessary. Yep. So over-investigating, over-medicalizing, over-treating. And there comes a point whereby you're putting more money in and the outcomes get worse. And that's yep. what you see in the States. And that's what you yep. see across Europe because the... The American model is actually is expanding internationally. I mean, I, mean I'm, I think America is an absolute outlier on this. America and expenditure, I mean, it's something like three times what we spend. But you're looking at, say, France, Germany, Belgium, you know, even some of the East European countries. Yeah, their you, outcomes, you, if you, with, listen, if with, you get cancer, you no, no, Bob, yeah. if you get cancer and you live in pretty much any other country in Europe, you've got a better chance of surviving than if you live here, even though we are the sixth richest economy in the world. That says something's not going right. Now, I don't know what the answer is, but that says, I mean, that's not good enough, right? If, if we have this perfect, wonderful system, A, why is it not delivering better outcomes if it's so efficient? And B, why has no one else around the world gone, God, that's a good system, we should copy that one. Why have they all got these social insurance systems in Europe? Well, they did copy the beverage system. It was copied in Scandinavia, Israel, Saudi Arabia, Spain. So it was copied across the country. The NHS we have now is not the NHS that we used to have. True. It's been heavily bureaucratized, it's been marketized, and a comparison to Europe is misleading. We are copying the Americans. We're Our not, I mean, we're models, not. I mean, we're just we are, not. Let me, well, let me explain. We, are, we employ American consultancies, McKinsey's, to write our legislation. We, we hired United Health's uh, president of global expansion to run the NHS for seven years. Uh, Sir Simon NHS Stevens. Simon Stevens, the 2022 Health and Care Bill has now replicated the structures within the NHS, 42 new public-private organizations, which are modeled on the American managed care system. That is the reality. People are, don't understand this because nobody's telling them. And our politicians are having a totally deceptive uh, conversation about, you know, what more reform. Keir Starmer is missing the two big elephants in the room, we don't have enough staff. We don't have enough beds. He has no solution for those. But that's because we're spending so much on all these layers of bureaucracy. I don't know how many different layers of bureaucracy you need to do this. You need someone to help make I mean, the bookings and run the run the you know run run the actual you know admin of that. But other than that, I don't know why you would possibly need. I mean, ridiculous numbers of staff on six-figure salaries. Because they are marketizing it, and the the whole system depends that, that the system they are copying is heavily bureaucratic heavy because you, part of the problem is you're going to be sucking out millions in chief executive pays on these new boards, these new public-private partnerships that they have created, and Keir Starmer has not spent one uh, second explaining what's gone on because okay. he's signaling to the city, he's signaling to the investors that we are carrying on the same direction and get ready to fill your boots. You, you seriously think that that's what he thinks that people want and that... I mean, I, I despair at both parties for not tackling this issue, exactly. but I don't think there's anyone remotely sane who thinks, let's go down the American route when it costs so much with such poor outcomes. Of course they won't say it because it's political suicide. These are not idiots. You're saying they're doing yeah. this because they're going to feather their, their, their nests afterwards? And feel Absolutely. Keir Starmer, West Streeting have received funding from people, uh, millionaire donors with interest in private health. You know, it's all there on the record. People can find out for themselves. I, do you know what? I mean, I'm a terrible old cynic, but I, I, I think people are incompetent and hopeless and weak and spineless in politics a lot of the time. I think most of the time, not all, I think there are definitely people I've got some big question marks about, uh, are, are not necessarily just after filling their boots. I mean, West Streeting, for instance, he, you know, he's recently survived cancer treatment. He'll have had a first-hand experience, not just as Shadow Health Secretary, but as a patient in the NHS. Um, I, I, I wonder whether that is his motive, to be honest with you. No, I don't think so at all. Just because you, just you use him. a service, just because you use a service, does not make you an expert. Where streeting should be saying, we have a problem of understaffing. We need to stop the hemorrhage of staff. How do we do that? We pay the staff. We don't say work harder, and that's what they're coming okay. up with. 
That is the absolute nonsense they're coming up with. All right. They're scapegoating the staff and they're scapegoating patients. Pathetic. Dr. Bob Gill, really interesting to talk to you. Thank you very much. NHSGP himself and his producer of the documentary, The Great NHS Heist.